What's going on, you guys? So, since my last movie review that I just did, did so well, <laughs> does that movie, then since that review did so well, I'm going to review another movie, Black Panther. Another late movie review, no less, which means it'll probably get about roughly negative five views and fall flat on its face, but it's fine. I want to review it. It's kind of a completionist thing with Infinity War coming out in just a couple of days. So let's talk about Black Panther. I am sorry I didn't review it when it came out. I'm not really sure why. It kind of slipped my mind, I guess. I just didn't think about reviewing it for some reason. I'm dumb sometimes. But regardless, we're talking about it now. Better late than never. There will be spoilers in this video if you haven't seen the movie. You probably have because everybody and their dog has seen it. It's made like over a billion dollars. It's insane. So yeah, you've probably seen the movie, but if you haven't, spoiler warning. I'm not going to go through every single spoiler like a bullet point presentation, but... I will be talking about the movie as if you guys have seen it. So with that being said, let's talk about Black Panther. I'm really not sure where to start with this review, honestly. Uh, I guess I could start off by just saying, in general, I think this movie kind of falls into the... I think this movie falls into, like, the Doctor Strange, Spider-Man Homecoming tier of Marvel movies. And that's not to say it's bad at all. I, I love... Uh, well, I don't want to say I love, but I do like Spider-Man Homecoming, and I do like Doctor Strange. I, both, I think they're both really good, and they're really interesting and creative and unique, but in terms of story and everything, they are a bit formulaic. Well, I don't know. Spider-Man Homecoming kind of breaks some formulas. Uh, it is a really good villain, which is a change for the Marvel movies. Uh, it's not a huge scale threat that's like the whole world's at risk, you know. The love interest is there, but it feels meaningful, even though she's kind of in the background. Uh, Homecoming does a good job kind of setting itself apart from other Marvel movies in a way, but it's still not like anything groundbreaking or amazing, and it does have its share of problems. And the same thing with Doctor Strange. Super creative, a bit formulaic, though. I think it follows the Marvel formula a bit too much. But I'm not here to review those movies, obviously. I'm here to review Black Panther. But I wanted to give my piece on them because I don't want you guys to think that me putting Black Panther in that tier is a bad thing. I do think Black Panther is good. I think it's entertaining. I think it's fun. It's got a bit of depth. It takes itself a bit more seriously than some of the other Marvel movies, especially more seriously than the previous Marvel movie before Black Panther, which was Thor Ragnarok, which is borderline comedy. You could argue it is a comedy. So it was nice and refreshing to see that. Uh, and there are aspects of this movie that make me want to put it higher. I love the music. I love the culture. I love the waterfall fights and how grand everything feels. And the cinematography is amazing. And the world building and vibranium is so cool. And what they do at the end of the movie, opening it up to the entire world. And that changes the game for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. At least it should change the game for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, like, it's it's cool. It's 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 really good. But there are parts of the movie that I think drag it down a bit, and we'll talk about those. Uh, in fact, I think I'll talk about the negatives first, because I have strong feelings about some of my negatives of the movie, so I feel like I'll start with that, then wrap things up with the positives. So, negatives of the movie. Starting on the lighter side, I'd say this is more of like a nitpick. The humor in the movie is kind of mixed. There's not a lot of it, so I do remember a lot of the jokes, because there's only a few in the movie. There are funny ones. Uh, like when she records him kicking the kinetic suit and he flies across the room and he's like, delete that footage. That was funny. Um, some of the stuff you have with Andy Serkis as Claw is funny. When he's singing in the interrogation room, I thought that was funny. The SoundCloud thing, though, eh, kind of cringy. The whip your hair back and forth thing, kind of cringy. The, uh, you know, he freezes and says hi to his girl that he likes. Yeah, I'm not... I know you want to give more aspects to his personality, you maybe have him act a little bit silly, but I don't know, it just... The humor that's not good, I think, really falls flat in this one. Whereas, you know, you have a movie like Thor Ragnarok, where if one joke falls flat, there's like another joke right away that's, you know, it hits hard and you laugh or you really, you find it entertaining. Uh, whereas, with this movie, the humor's further and far between, so when you do get a joke and it falls flat, it's a little noticeable. But again nitpicking totally nitpicking not a big deal at all i still like i said i'm gonna start a little bit light with my criticisms moving on to a little bit higher of a of a criticism the special effects they're not that great uh, i wouldn't say they're absolute garbage because the only part of the movie where the special effects are noticeably bad is the final fight which is a shame but it's very noticeable it looks like some kind of weird ps4 cutscene. Lighting is weird on the suits. It just, it doesn't look good. Even the physics of how they move looks a little bit weird. 
Uh, and then you have the fight scene in the um, in the casino place where they have all the card tables and stuff, and it's all done in one take, and it's really well choreographed, and it's awesome. But the final shot where you see Claw, and you see a full body shot of Claw in the corner of the room, he don't he don't look like he's there. Like if he was actually there, I'd be shocked because it don't look like he was actually there at all. Uh, so yeah, the green screen there was kind of bad. But the rest of the movie looks fine. It probably helps that the suit is filmed in the dark for the most part. Though he looked pretty good in the final action scene where all the Wakandans like fought each other. So, I don't know. It just seems kind of inconsistent, I guess, as far as special effects go. Again, it doesn't ruin the movie, but it's a bigger criticism than some bad jokes. And I'm moving a little bit higher on the uh, totem pole. We have... Uh, do I talk about this... Because I'm like a white guy, so I'm just kidding. Uh, the social commentary, fuck it, I'm going for it. Um, I don't care. The social commentary in the movie is unnecessary, and it's botched. I'm not some anti-SJW that bitches and moans like an SJW would for some insensitive bullshit. Because that's the thing about anti-SJWs, they're just as bad, but they don't see it in themselves. They complain just as bad as SJWs do about SJWs, like some weird SJW Inception. I'm not like that. I'm fine with diversity. I'm fine with maybe some social commentary, but my problem with the social commentary in this movie is not only does it feel unnecessary, uh, I feel like you could have had Killmonger just want to be king because he has the right to do it and he does, and, you know, the sins of the father wants to kill T'Challa. That would be fine. But no, you know what I mean? Like, that's not what we have. We have, uh, you know, this racism that he has. And, like, he, he talks about how, you know, when he walks into the museum, you know, all of a sudden the security guards are watching him. And it's it's a social commentary on racism against black people. That's what it is. Can't beat around the bush. My problem with how it's executed is that Killmonger is radical. His perspective on things is warped. He wants to, like, kill white people and kill other races that put down his race. That's fine as far as a villain goes. He's not supposed to be likable. But if he's not supposed to be likable and he has this warped perspective and he's wrong about things, how does the commentary work? Like, how is there a commentary from a character that is deliberately written to be wrong? Isn't that like a straw man? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. And it just feels like it just didn't need to be in the movie. He could have just wanted to be king, and that's it. You didn't need to tack on this extra stuff. When I was going into this movie, I was thinking, you know what, it's probably not going to have any social commentary. It's not going to have any quote-unquote SJW stuff in it. Because it will probably mostly take place in Africa, where there's only black people, and you don't need to bring up that stuff. And they found a way to bring it up. And I think that it was unnecessary. It doesn't massively hurt the film. I think even if you disregard that, the other problems I talked about are still relevant and they're still there. Um, I think Killmonger also is painted way too much to be sympathetic when he's not a sympathetic character. You know, you get that scene at the end of the movie where they carry him, where Chitala carries him up to see the sunset and shit. And it's like, he didn't deserve that. He didn't earn that. That's bullshit. Don't get me wrong. It makes sense that he, you know, has a little bit of sympathy because he got left behind, left alone. I mean, I don't know where his mom was. They never mentioned that. At least I don't think they do. But, yeah, like, it's... I don't know. Like, they paint him as sympathetic, but he's such an asshole. He's such a piece of shit. He's killed so many people, uh, and he likes doing it. It's just... I don't know. I don't see a sympathetic character. I see a little bit of depth. There's a nice scene where he talks to his dad when he's buried in the sand... And he's in his old apartment. That was a great scene for his character, but you could have done more with him. You could have had a really, really good character with Killmonger. And I think they just botched it because you could have done more with him. I feel like he was underutilized and a bit underdeveloped. I feel like Claw could have been the villain of this movie, and then you could have maybe used Killmonger for a sequel. Or had him be... Maybe have Claw take a more prominent role in this movie and have, like, Killmonger in the background and then when Claw, you know, gets beaten at the end of this movie or whatever, then Killmonger has a bit of development in this movie and he's fully fleshed out in the next one. I don't know how I would do it. I'm not a screenwriter, but I feel like he was underutilized. And that's kind of it for the bigger negatives of the film. Uh, there's a couple other things I could nitpick here and there, but overall, I just think the movie... Yeah, there are a couple other things. Um... The cliches, like, I, I get it, it's a movie, but, like, when T'Challa gets thrown over the waterfall by Killmonger and everyone thinks he's dead, it's like, he's not dead. Aside from the fact that Infinity War is coming out and he's in the trailer, 
of course he's not fucking dead. Like, we've seen movies before. Like, you can't... Like, that to me was dumb. I feel like you could have done something else with T'Challa instead of writing him out of the movie for 20 minutes. Uh, and then you have... When they talks to uh, Baku or M'Baku, I think it starts with an M or whatever. It's a weird name, but he's cool. He's funny. Even if his humor is a little... It feels a little out of character, I'm not going to lie, but I guess you don't get much of his character before he starts being humorous, so I don't know. Uh, but he's a, he's a cool, fun character. Um, he doesn't do much in the movie, though. Hopefully we see him do some stuff in, in Infinity War, but I'm not going to hold my breath because that movie has, like, 7,000 characters, and I want to see those 7,000 characters do shit before Baku does, but... That scene where he talks to T'Challa, and T'Challa says, you know, I could use an army, and he says, we will not help you, and it's like, of course he's going to show up at the last second. Those, they're not a big deal, but I feel like those formulaic, predictable elements, pretending he's dead, saying the army's not going to come when it obviously will, amongst the other problems I listed, I think those are the things that hold this movie back from being top-tier Marvel movie, even though it has... The great soundtrack, the fun action sequences, you know, the incredible cinematography, world building, culture, all that other shit I already listed. Yeah, it has all this great stuff in it, you know what I mean? It has all of this super good, great music, culture, world building, Wakanda, all that stuff. It's super cool. It's super awesome. I want to place the movie higher because of all those great elements, but I think the negatives do drag it back down just enough to be in that tier of... It's a good Marvel movie. It's average Marvel, but it's good. You know, it's fun, it's entertaining, it gets the job done, it expands the world of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a huge way. So yeah, moving on to the positives. Performances are fantastic. Uh, Michael B. Jordan, is, as even though I had criticisms of his character, he's good. Like, he's good in the role, and he has charisma, and I would still say he is a higher-tier Marvel villain which is kind of sad, because other Marvel villains are just so bad that Killmonger, who I think is, like, okay, is in the higher tier. But I do think he's okay. Don't confuse that with I think he's bad. I thought he was good. You know, he's just not great. Uh, Could have been utilized better, I think. And then you have Claw, and he's good. Andy Serkis does a good job. I love seeing Andy Serkis in movies. He's funny. Um, a little confusing. That I mean, I'm nitpicking, but it's a little confusing that a guy that crazy could avoid them for, like, three decades or two decades or whatever. But whatever, not a big deal. Um, you know, and I think he was more sane in Age of Ultron, which is kind of inconsistent, unless you want to say him getting his arm chopped off in Age of Ultron made him go crazy, which, fair argument. <laughs> I think that's a fair argument. Uh, but yeah, uh, and again, the action scenes are really fun. Yeah, Black Panther does feel kind of invincible in all of them, but they're really badass. The car chase is really cool. It uses some cool Wakandan technology, and him doing the car flips and releasing the kinetic energy and just... It's badass. It's really fun. You know, he runs along the side of the building. The stuff you've seen in the trailers, that's a great action scene. Uh, you know, the final fight with the rhinos coming in, and he, like, RKO's a fucking rhino, and he takes down that ship, and, you know, that moment where he walks up, and he's just like, the challenge ain't over, I didn't yield, and I'm not dead. Hype. Like, that shit's really cool. Again, there's so many things in this movie that make me want to put it higher, but I don't know, I just, I feel like the negatives for me, they just, they outweigh, even if I set aside the social commentary stuff, I think the underutilized villain and all the other stuff I mentioned just bring it down. But again, I really want to give it that praise, you know, I'm not trying to shit on this movie. Uh, it is really, it is really fun, it is really good, and I do like that you have some depth for the villain, even if it wasn't completely well executed. And I like what they do with T'Challa, I like that he has this admiration for his father, and he's, you know, worried about becoming king, and then, you know, over the course of the movie, he realizes, you know, my father wasn't that great, like, he was a good guy, but he made mistakes, and he doesn't want to make the same mistakes, and he actually confronts his spirit on that when he does, like, this buried in the snow thing, and it's a really nice scene, and I like the character development that Shala gets, uh, you can boil his character development down to he doesn't want to open the world to Wakanda, and by the end of the movie, he does, but there's more to it. There's stuff with Killmonger. There's other aspects to it. It's more complex than that. I don't want to go into all of it and bore you guys, but it's it's a good character arc, and you have good supporting characters. Um, yeah, it's a good movie. I'd probably give Black Panther a solid 8 out of 10. I thought it was really good. You know, as, Despite me shitting on it with the uh, negatives, I think the positives are really strong. Again, 
the culture, the cinematography, the action sequences, the world building, what it does for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the character arc, the fact that the lack of humor creates a more serious tone, which is refreshing for Marvel movies. It's good. You know, it's good. I'll definitely be picking this up on Blu-ray. It's just a shame that it had to have those other elements kind of bog it down for me. Um, but yeah, I thought they did a good job. Ryan Coogler was a, you know, he directed the shit out of the movie. He did a great job. Again, cinematography, phenomenal. I keep mentioning that stuff because it's so good. Uh, yeah, it's it's a good time. If you haven't seen it and you've just been spoiled like crazy, whatever, go see it. It's still a good time. Uh, but with that said, if you have seen the movie, tell me what you guys thought of Black Panther in the comments section below. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it on social media. Both of those would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. Click the little bell to get notifications when my videos go up. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.